a novel methodology for evaluating educational resources in development using online student focus groups is presented in this preprint. As an alternative to traditional in-person focus groups, rendered infeasible by COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, the authors propose conducting student focus groups via online video conferencing software. This approach enables researchers to gather detailed information about students' interactions with new educational resources. The methodology was tested on two introductory statistics resources, yielding rich, detailed feedback from participants. The online setting proved more efficient than traditional methods, eliminating the need for travel and physical space availability. Increased accessibility and flexibility for both students and researchers are highlighted as key benefits of online focus groups. The paper emphasizes the importance of involving students in the development stage of educational resources, rather than merely assessing them after completion. Online focus groups can provide valuable insights into how students perceive and interact with these resources, ultimately enhancing their usability and educational value. The authors argue that this approach can improve the design and effectiveness of educational resources, particularly in teaching and learning statistics. Online focus groups are presented as an attractive alternative to in-person focus groups, even as pandemic restrictions are eased, contributing to ongoing discussions on innovative methods for enhancing educational resources and student engagement in the development process. The development of interactive web apps for student learning requires careful planning and structured guidance to ensure effectiveness. Involving students in the development process through feedback collection, focus groups, and think-aloud sessions is crucial for improving usability and educational value. This study developed two interactive web apps with accompanying structured activity sheets, following a cyclical evaluation model that incorporated student feedback and insights throughout the development process. This approach mirrors the Ooms and Garfield 2008 framework, which includes planning the evaluation process, evaluating educational value, assessing resource use, and determining educational impact. Focus groups and think-aloud sessions provided valuable qualitative data and insights into user experiences, allowing researchers to observe participants sharing ideas, debating, and providing immediate feedback as they worked on tasks. This methodology is supported by McKagan et al. 2008 who used think-aloud sessions to improve the design and functionality of the FET suite of simulation tools for teaching physics. By involving students in the development process, researchers can identify interface, pedagogical, and programming issues in the web apps, ultimately enhancing their effectiveness in promoting student learning. This study highlights the importance of student involvement in creating interactive web apps that cater to their needs and promote effective learning outcomes. By incorporating student feedback and insights, researchers can develop web apps that are tailored to student requirements, leading to improved educational value and usability. Online focus groups and think-aloud sessions have gained popularity in recent research, particularly in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. By leveraging digital platforms, researchers have observed that participants share more candidly and provide in-depth stories when discussing sensitive topics. This approach fosters participant engagement, resulting in a higher word count and shorter discussion time compared to traditional in-person sessions. Notably, online focus groups have been shown to generate an equivalent number of unique ideas as in-person groups, with a high degree of overlap in themes. The benefits of online focus groups are multifaceted, including efficiency, ease of setup, and inclusivity for geographically dispersed participants. However, researchers must consider practical limitations, such as scheduling and attendance, as well as the types of responses that can be solicited from participants. Despite these limitations, online focus groups offer a valuable tool for researchers seeking to explore complex topics and gather rich, qualitative data. Conducting online focus groups offers a range of benefits for gathering feedback on educational resources, including increased accessibility, cost-effectiveness, and convenience. A study at the University of British Columbia leveraged online student focus groups to assess recently developed statistics resources available on StatSpace, aimed at improving understanding of complex concepts such as the power of a statistical test. The study employed interactive web apps developed in R Shiny, accompanied by activity sheets, to facilitate online collaboration and gather feedback from students. 
The results provided actionable insights for enhancing these resources, underscoring the value of online collaboration in resource development. Notably, the online focus groups enabled researchers to reach a diverse student population, increasing the representativeness of the feedback. Moreover, the interactive web apps allowed for real-time feedback and discussion, fostering a deeper understanding of the resources and their limitations. The study's findings highlight the importance of iterative development and refinement of educational resources. By incorporating student feedback and perspectives, educators can create more effective and engaging learning materials, ultimately enhancing student learning outcomes. The methodology employed in this study demonstrates the potential of online focus groups as a valuable tool for educational research, offering a convenient, cost-effective, and accessible means of gathering feedback and informing resource development. Researchers have developed interactive web applications to help students understand statistical power in hypothesis testing. These web apps, accessible on GitHub, require no prior knowledge of R programming. Users can modify various settings, such as population average and variance, and desired test specificity, to visualize how these factors affect statistical power. The app's graphical displays adapt to these settings, providing an interactive simulation experience. To enhance the effectiveness of these simulations, structured activity sheets with questions were created for students. These sheets include learning objectives, prerequisites, and a preamble, providing instructors with a structured approach to incorporating the web apps into their teaching. Two resources were developed, differing only in their settings, one with observations from a single population and another from two populations. This summary focuses on the single population resource, which was tested in all but one of the focus groups. To gather feedback, online student focus group sessions were conducted between August and November 2020, using Zoom for video conferences. 22 students from introductory and intermediate statistics courses participated in five focus groups. Both groups had prior experience in at least one college-level course, with the intermediate group having additional experience in calculus and statistics. The findings section of the paper includes a screenshot of one of the web apps, showcasing its user-friendly interface and interactive nature. Researchers organized online focus groups to develop educational resources for students leveraging virtual sessions to reduce time commitments and increase accessibility. Participants signed a consent form before engaging in team-based activities, with one student sharing their screen with the web app, another leading discussions, and a third assisting in formulating answers. Observations focused on student engagement, conceptual learning, and user experience. The online format enabled researchers to connect from any location, resulting in a comparable attendance rate of 75.9% to in-person focus groups. Findings suggest that the web app and activity sheet facilitated conceptual understanding among participants, with students demonstrating improved comprehension of complex topics through discussions and interactions. However, limitations were noted, including the need for clearer instructions on web app usage. User experience was a significant theme with students appreciating the interactive nature of the web app but pointing out design flaws, such as navigation issues and unclear features. Comparisons with unpublished in-person focus groups, 20,162,018, revealed similar attendance rates but unique challenges and opportunities in the online format. The study highlights the importance of considering the online setting's impact on student engagement and learning outcomes in educational resource development. These insights will inform refinements to the resources, addressing limitations and improving overall user experience to better meet student needs. In evaluating the effectiveness of online focus groups for gathering feedback on a statistics education resource, the authors found no compromise in the quality of information obtained compared to in-person focus groups. Students demonstrated equal willingness to share information about the resource and activity in both online and in-person settings. The online setting offered distinct advantages, including convenience and flexibility, which are likely to persist even as in-person instruction resumes, given the growing familiarity with online settings and interest in blended learning courses. In the context of student learning experience, an introductory statistics course was analyzed, where students completed an activity sheet but struggled to grasp the main concept. This was evident from their interaction with web applications and the activity design 
which allowed students to progress without understanding the underlying concepts. For instance, a question on the power of the t-test when the population mean is equal to 1 was not adequately addressed, as depicted in the screenshot of the one sample t-test web app, where the power is highlighted in the bottom plot. This highlights a critical gap in student understanding, underscoring the need for more effective instructional design and support. A case study of two students, Aaron and Barbara, reveals a common issue in understanding statistical concepts. Barbara demonstrated a near grasp of power as the blue area under the curve, whereas Aaron fixated on the displayed value without recognizing its visual representation. This disparity in comprehension can be attributed to factors such as limited exposure to undergraduate statistics and inadequate attention to the activity sheet's preamble, which clarifies the definition of power. In this context, the concept of power refers to the probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. The blue area under the curve represents the power of the test, which is a critical aspect of statistical analysis. Aaron's failure to recognize this visual representation suggests a lack of understanding of the underlying statistical principles. This issue highlights the importance of thorough comprehension of statistical concepts, particularly in undergraduate education. The study suggests that students may struggle to grasp complex ideas due to inadequate exposure or incomplete understanding of foundational principles. Furthermore, the findings emphasize the need for educators to ensure that students engage thoroughly with instructional materials, including activity sheets and preambles, to foster a deeper understanding of statistical concepts. The study's results have implications for the development of educational materials and instructional strategies. By recognizing the challenges students face in understanding statistical concepts, educators can design more effective learning experiences that promote a deeper comprehension of complex ideas. In an intermediate statistics course, students effectively connected conceptual understanding with the mechanical steps of a web application, fostering the development of their own questions. A notable example involved students Cameron, Danielle, and Fred who engaged in a discussion on the interplay between variance, effect size, and power. They hypothesized that increasing variance would decrease power, which was subsequently confirmed through the web app. This interaction highlighted the effectiveness of the web app and activity for students with prior exposure to the topics, underscoring the need for additional introductory resources. Moreover, students who initially provided incorrect answers were prompted to reflect on their mistakes and retry ultimately leading to a deeper understanding of the core concepts. This reflection process was a crucial step towards achieving a successful understanding of the concepts. In contrast, students in the introductory course struggled to connect the concepts with the mechanical steps, suggesting that the web app may be better suited for students with a stronger statistical background. This disparity emphasizes the importance of adapting the web app and activity to accommodate students with varying levels of statistical proficiency. Researchers have developed an online methodology to assess educational resources through student focus groups, yielding valuable insights into student engagement and resource development. Two novel resources were created and tested online, generating feedback on both the resources and the methodology. Notably, advanced students demonstrated a deeper understanding of core concepts, as observed through their interaction with web apps. They independently hypothesized relationships between concepts and used the web app to test their understanding, whereas introductory course students worked through the activity without fully grasping the main concept. The online setting of the focus groups did not compromise the quality of information obtained offering advantages in organization and time savings for both students and researchers. The study underscores the importance of incorporating student feedback into resource development, such as adding key formulae to facilitate concept mechanism connections in problem-solving processes. For instance, students suggested including formulae to relate concepts with mechanical steps, enhancing their understanding of complex relationships. The findings suggest that the online methodology can be beneficial for future assessments, pending potential modifications as schools transition back to in-person instruction. This approach can inform the development of educational resources that cater to diverse student needs, promoting a deeper understanding of complex concepts. This section of the research paper explores the potential benefits and limitations of utilizing online student focus groups to enhance educational resources in statistical education. 
These groups can offer valuable insights into student learning patterns, preferences, and areas of difficulty, which could be crucial for improving teaching methods and materials. The use of online focus groups provides an opportunity to gather information from a diverse group of students, including those who might not participate in traditional face-to-face -face discussions. This could lead to a more comprehensive understanding of student needs and preferences, ultimately resulting in more effective educational resources. However, there are also limitations to consider. For instance, some students may struggle with expressing their thoughts and opinions in an online environment, potentially leading to underrepresentation of certain viewpoints. Additionally, technical issues or lack of access to technology could hinder participation, further limiting the scope of the data collected. Moreover, the validity and reliability of the data obtained through online focus groups may be questioned due to factors such as participant motivation, self-reported data, and potential biases in the selection process. Therefore, it is essential to carefully design and implement these groups to ensure that they are representative and provide accurate information. In conclusion, while online student focus groups have the potential to significantly improve educational resources in statistical education, they must be carefully planned and executed to address their inherent limitations. By acknowledging these challenges and working to overcome them, researchers can leverage this innovative method to gain valuable insights into student learning and improve educational outcomes. The presented page offers a detailed compilation of research findings, methodologies, and conclusions. It delves into the complexities of various scientific disciplines, providing an in-depth analysis of key concepts and their implications. The document begins by outlining the importance of interdisciplinary research, emphasizing the need for collaboration between different fields to tackle complex problems. This is followed by a detailed discussion on methodological approaches, including quantitative and qualitative methods, experimental design, and statistical analysis. A significant portion of the text is dedicated to exploring theoretical frameworks and conceptual models. These include discussions on systems theory, social constructivism, and post-positivism, among others. The authors also delve into the role of technology in enhancing research capabilities, highlighting advancements in computational modeling, data visualization, and machine learning algorithms. The page also touches upon ethical considerations in research, emphasizing the importance of maintaining objectivity, avoiding bias, and ensuring participant consent. Furthermore, it addresses challenges faced during the research process, such as data quality issues, methodological limitations, and the need for ongoing professional development. In terms of conclusions, the document emphasizes the value of evidence-based practice and the significance of continuous learning and adaptation. It encourages researchers to embrace new methodologies and technologies while remaining grounded in established principles and practices. Limitations of the study are acknowledged particularly regarding the scope and generalizability of the findings. Suggestions for future research directions are provided, focusing on areas where further exploration is warranted. Overall, this comprehensive resource serves as a valuable guide for researchers across various disciplines, offering insights into best practices, emerging trends, and critical challenges in the field. This page presents a comprehensive compilation of cutting-edge research findings in the field of computational neuroscience. It aims to provide an in-depth analysis of the complex interplay between neural networks and their role in cognitive processes, such as learning, memory formation, and decision-making. The research paper begins by outlining the fundamental principles of neural networks, emphasizing their hierarchical organization and distributed processing capabilities. The authors then delve into the intricacies of synaptic plasticity, a key mechanism underlying learning and memory, where they discuss both Hebbian and non-Hebbian forms of plasticity. A significant portion of the paper is dedicated to exploring the concept of neural codes, which refer to the patterns of neural activity that encode information within the brain. The authors examine various types of neural codes, including rate codes, temporal codes, and population codes, each with its own strengths and limitations. Furthermore, the paper delves into the realm of neural circuits, focusing on the distinct types of circuits involved in different cognitive functions. For instance, the authors discuss the role of feedforward circuits in sensory processing, feedback circuits in attentional modulation, and recurrent circuits in working memory. The paper also touches upon the relationship between neural networks and behavior, 
highlighting how specific neural patterns can predict behavioral outcomes. This section is particularly noteworthy for its emphasis on the importance of understanding the neural basis of behavior in order to develop more effective treatments for neurological and psychiatric disorders. In terms of methodologies, the authors rely heavily on computational modeling techniques, such as Hodgkin-Huxley models for simulating individual neurons and Wilson-Cowan models for examining the dynamics of neural populations. These models are used to simulate various scenarios and predict potential outcomes, thereby providing valuable insights into the workings of the human brain. The paper concludes by discussing the limitations of current research and potential avenues for future exploration. One notable area of interest is the integration of computational neuroscience with other disciplines, such as psychology and philosophy, in order to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the mind-brain relationship. Overall, this compilation serves as a valuable resource for researchers seeking to understand the complex interplay between neural networks and cognitive processes. By synthesizing cutting-edge findings from multiple fields, the authors provide a comprehensive overview of the current state of knowledge in computational neuroscience.